Hello there everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today we are wrapping up our Marauder guys by talking about the Carnage Marauder. Carnage Marauder is a single target burst spec for Marauder that gets often very overlooked and gets called a really wonky spec. However, it has a pretty straightforward rotation and once you understand what each ability is doing, the class makes sense. So, let's talk about it. Brief disclaimer as usual, I'm not an expert, I'm just a guy that's played the game for a hot second and kind of knows what he's doing. Carnage Marauder is a basic builder spender spec. What I mean by that is you're gonna have this uh, resource here called Rage, and you're going to build Rage with some abilities that are gonna do less damage, and then you're going to spend that Rage on abilities that do high damage. But for, before we actually talk about our abilities, let's talk about the core of Carnage Marauder, which is going to come from our Ataru form. Ataru form gives you an extra 3% alacrity, and it means that Carnage is supposed to be a very high, fast-paced spec. Additionally, a Terraform gives us a 20% chance to do an extra attack that does 40 or 4k extra damage uh, every time you attack the target with a lightsaber. However, because of some of our buffs we're going to be giving ourselves, this buff is going to increase to like a 50% chance to attack the target extra an extra time. And additionally, most of our abilities actually attack the target twice in a single global cooldown. So it's about a 75% chance to trigger an Ataru form strike every time you attack the target. It is free. 4k extra damage on your strikes, pretty handy. Additionally, our Atari form strikes are going to give us some buffs that we'll talk about later. Just know that the entire spec kind of functions around generating these Atari form strikes and then spending the buffs that come with them. Now, that is the first passive we have to be paying attention to. The first active ability we're gonna be paying attention to isn't actually a damaging ability, it is our ferocity. Ferocity will give you two stacks of ferocity, and what it does is it increases your armor penetration by 100% for our high damaging abilities. Now, this is not correlating to an exactly 100% extra damage. It's more like a 50% damage bonus for every time that you consume a ferocity stack. So you can see here, if I use ferocity on the target, I have one stack. Now I have, I'm sorry, I had two stacks. Now I have one stacks. And now I have zero stacks. It increases the damage of our high damaging abilities by about 50%. It's very nice. We want to be using those ferocity stacks to create our burst damage windows. Additionally, there is a third ability that is not directly damaging, but that's very important to us called our Berserk. Berserk does two things. The first is that it grants you an additional 30% alacrity every time you use it. So you can see where the, the theory behind Carnage Marauder is coming from, is that they want you to be high alacrity. So because we want to be high alacrity, let's discuss our alacrity really quick. We're actually going to jump our alacrity up to about 2.5k. And on top of that, so this is so the 2.5k is going to give us about a 1.3 second global cooldown. And then when we pop our Berserk, our alacrity is actually going to jump up to 46%, which is going to be like a 1.1 second global cooldown. It is a very, very fast paced spec. Additionally, when we have our stacks of Berserk here, whenever we use our Ferocity, is going to generate actually three stacks of Ferocity, not just two. So it's going to give us a little bit of a longer burst window there. Um, it's very handy, again, so you just take a look at it. Whenever you spend those stacks of Berserk, you're going to get 30% extra alacrity, and you're going to get an additional stack of Ferocity. However, how do you build those stacks of Berserk? Well, your stacks of Berserk come from whenever you spend Rage. So let me demonstrate here real quick. If I start spending Rage, it's going to slowly generate these stacks of Fury until you reach 30 stacks. And once you reach 30 stacks, you can spend your Berserk and then you can go into your burst damage windows. So backing up real quick, a Taro form strikes trigger about 75% of the time, just passively whenever you attack the target. Your Ferocity is your generating your burst damage windows and your Berserk is granting you a lot of alacrity and then extending that burst damage window. This also means that we want to be using our Ferocity with Berserk every time. So just keep that in mind as we're building our rotation. Every time you use Berserk, you want to follow pretty much immediately after with Ferocity so that you build three stacks of Ferocity and not just two. Okay, those are our three beginners abilities, but let's actually do some damage now and talk about our primary damaging abilities. Fortunately, we don't have to care about a lot of them in our basic Marauder or our basic Carnage Marauder rotation. The first that we're going to talk about is our primary builder called Battering Assault. Battering Assault only has a 10 second cooldown. It's a little bit shorter than your other specs, 
Additionally, it's not going to do that much damage, but it's going to generate six rage. Rage being the primary resource that we're going to be spending. It's very important that we use this during a rotation. It's also going to beat down the target, which is going to cause us to do 5% extra damage to this target anytime that we use our battering assault on it. So it's pretty important in our rotation, but it's not going to do a lot of damage. So let's talk about the damage. Our key abilities for doing damage are going to be our Massacre, Gore, Vicious Throw, and Devastating Blast. Let's talk about those in order. Massacre is going to do a moderate amount of damage. It's going to, well, so the moderate amount of damage, eh, it's all right. It's more of a filler damage than actual burst damage. However, it's going to do a couple extra things that's going to help us out with the damage here. For one, it is going to automatically trigger an Ataru form strike. So don't think of it as like 12k damage. You can think of it like 16k damage because it's going to be automatically triggering an Ataru form strike. Additionally, it's going to increase the Ataru form rate of our, I'm sorry, it's going to increase the rate of our Ataru form strike by 30%, which is how we get up to that 75% ratio. Uh, so every time you use Massacre, you're going to see this buff here that says Massacre. It just means that you have an increased chance to trigger those Ataru form strikes and get procs later on. It's also doing another thing here and adding stacks of Hyper to us. This is because of our tactical that we're taking called Feigned God Form. Now what's happening here is because our, our alacrity is so high, our critical has actually plummeted down to like 1.5k. You can get this up with more idealized gear. This is more of a generic gear set um, than fully min-maxed. However, our crit is only at like 34%, which is not what we're trying to do here. We want to have those higher crit chances to do more damage. So by using feigned god form, we're actually going to be increasing our critical chance by 10% every time we use a massacre, stacking up to three times. So you can see now my critical chance has actually increased from 34% to 64%. Now there is a limit to this because the stacks of Fane God Form will fall off anytime you use an ability that's not Massacre. So it's not like you can sit at that 60% Massacre. So you can see here, if I use my Gore, suddenly my critical chance has dropped back down to 36%. Unfortunate. However, there is one more thing that Fang God Form is doing for us, and it is, incre it is decreasing the amount of rage consumed by Massacre by one stack every time you use Massacre. So you can see here, if I just start using Massacre, it's going to consume rage, consume rage, consume rage. And then after three stacks, it's actually going to start building rage for us. So that means if we hit our three stacks, we can slowly start to regenerate our rage. And then obviously rage is used for other high damaging abilities. It's very important to us to have our rage. So that is Massacre. It's doing a lot of things for us. It is increasing our Ataru form strikes. It is giving us uh, extra critical chance on all of our abilities. It is giving us a, a, a flat 60% damage, or I'm sorry, a flat uh, 16K damage without getting crits. And it's also increasing your critical chance. So it's very important to be using our Massacre. We'll talk about how we're going to abuse those stacks later. But now let's move on into our high damaging abilities. Our high damaging abilities are going to be used within our ferocity window. You know, we talked before about creating high damage burst windows by using our ferocity. So our three primary high damaging abilities are going to be gore for one. Gore does about 20K, 22K damage. It's, it's pretty nice. It also acts as a hinder, which means that you cannot use high uh, mobility abilities during gore for about a second afterwards. Think of it as like a 1.5 second net. Now this is a very short window when people can't use like phase walk or bubble or uh, force speed, etc. However, if you get the idea that like, hey, this Zork is getting low, he's probably gonna use his bubble soon, you can hit him with the gore and push back that bubble by an extra global cooldown, which might be the exact time you need to kill him. So it has a lot of opportunity for high octane play. However, I wouldn't concern yourself too much about it if you're getting started immediately. It is going to be used with our ferocity to do a lot more damage than it usually does. That is our first high damaging ability. Our second high damaging ability is our vicious throw. Now looking at the tooltip, it's doing like 20K damage, but it says it's only usable on targets at or below 30% max health. How is this gonna fit in our rotation? Well, I'm glad you asked me because every time you trigger an Ataru form strike, it is going to proc and now do a lot more damage and it is going to be usable on any target and actually refund rage. So you can see here I had it's glowing. So when I use it, it's actually going to give me rage and it's going to uh, be usable on any target. 
It's gonna be used in our Ferocity windows. We'll talk about those windows in a hot second. Finally, let's talk about our big boy, Devastating Blast. Now, Devastating Blast on its own does a moderate amount of damage. However, whenever we create an Ataru Form Strike, we're gonna get a couple benefits from Ataru Form Strikes. First of all, is going to be Execute. Doing damage in the Ataru Form Strike grants Execute, enabling your Force Scream or Devastating Blast to do 5% more damage. Additionally, when Execute is consumed by Devastating Blast, it's going to build one Rage. And finally, when you use Execute, which is the proc for Devastating Blast, it's going to cause your Devastating Blast to crit every single time. TLDR, whenever you see it glowing, it is going to refund one Rage, it's going to always crit, and it's going to do 5% extra damage. It is our big boy damage and is what we're going to always be using our Ferocity Windows with. So now let's talk about those Ferocity Windows. Ferocity Windows are going to break down into two different types of windows. The first is going to be with your Berserk stacks. So whenever you have your 30 stacks of Berserk, you're going to want to use Berserk, Ferocity, Massacre, Vicious Throw, Devastating Blast. The reason that we're doing this is because we're going to use Berserk for obviously the increased critical chance and the extra stack of Ferocity. Then we're going to use Massacre to keep up our Fang God form stacks. Then we're going to use our Vicious Throw because it is a high damaging ability. And then we're going to use our Devastating Blast as the final part of that window. I kind of, I kind of fucked it up there. Give me two quick seconds. I, I was too slow on the draw. So if we come back, um, let me just regen my raid or my focus real quick if it ever lets me out of combat. So walking it all back one more time, it's going to go Berserk into Ferocity because that way we get three stacks of Ferocity. Then it's going to go into Massacre to keep up our Fang God storm form stacks. Then it's going to go into Vicious uh, Throw because we're going to have our extra stacks of um, our extras, I'm sorry, our procs based off our Taru form. And then we're going to go into Devastating Blast. So walking that in order again, so let me make sure I have enough rage here. It's going to go Berserk, Ferocity, Massacre, Vicious Throw, Devastating Blast. Now the reason that we're using Devastating Blast at the end is because you're going to have auto crits on our Devastating Blast every time. So we don't need the extra stacks of critical from our Massacre spam into our uh, Devastating Blast. We should use it on our Vicious Throw or our Gore instead. Speaking of Gore, let's talk about our second uh, Ferocity window, which is going to be our Gore Ferocity window. So whenever you do not have your stacks of uh, Berserk ready to go, you're going to go Ferocity, Gore, Devastating Blast, and then your Battering Assault. Those are our two primary damage burst windows. Again, let's, let's walk that through one more time here. Oh, I'm dropping out of combat. Okay, I'm dropping through that one more time. You have your stacks of Hyper. You have all your 30 stacks of Fury ready to go. So your first primary burst damage window is going to be Berserk, Ferocity, Massacre, Vicious Throw, Devastating Blast. That is your first primary stack of uh, big burst damage. When you do not have your 30 stacks of Fury, your burst, damage, or burst window is going to look a little bit different. You're going to go Ferocity, Gore, Devastating Blast, and then Battering Assault to refund all the rage you just spent. Those are our two primary burst windows. But what are we doing between those primary burst windows? Well, I'm glad you asked me. We're going to be spamming Massacre five times in a row. I'm, I'm dead serious. We're going to spam Massacre five times in a row. Because what it's going to do is it's going to, for one, slowly regenerate rage. Because as we talked about before, when you spam Massacre so many times in a row, it's actually going to start rebuilding rage for us. And we need rage to do our high damaging abilities. We're also going to be building our stacks of hyper. So that way we build up our critical chance of 60% for our high damaging abilities. Um, and that's the primary reason we're going to be using blocks of five Massacres in between our burst damage windows. So, breaking down the full rotation. We have our opening 30% or 30 stacks of Fury into Berserk burst window. So, burst window number one. Berserk, Ferocity, Massacre, Furious Throw or Vicious Throw, Devastating Blast. And then one, two, three, four, five. 
And then we're going to go in our second burst window, which is going to be Ferocity, Gore, Devastating Blast, Battering Assault. Now back to Berserk. One, I'm going to scare. Two, three, four, five Massacres in a row for all that rage generation. And now you can see we're back at the beginning of our rotation because we have our 30 Stacks of Fury again. Back into it. 30 Stacks of Fury, Berserk, Massacre, or, I'm sorry, Ferocity, Massacre, Vicious Throw, Devastating Blast. One, two, three, four, five. Ferocity, Gore, Devastating Blast, Battering Assault. One, two, three, four, five. Beginning. Opening DB. Massacre, 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 Massacre. Ferocity window number two. Spending Gore, DB, and then Battering Assault. Massacre, 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 Massacre. The best way to think about this is just four basic sections of rotation. The first being your Berserk window. So again, I know, I know I'm being a dead horse here, but if you can nail this rotation, you'll be fine playing cards from the rest of your life. Opening Berserk window is Berserk, Ferocity, Massacre, Vicious Throw, Devastating Blast. Second phase of the rotation, five stacks of Massacre. Two, three, four, five. Third part of the rotation is our second burst window and our battering assault. So Ferocity, Gore, DB, battering assault. And then five massacres again. One, two, three, four, five. If you can sit down at a target dummy and memorize that rotation, it's going to be very straightforward. You're going to know it for the rest of the time. And it kind of makes sense when you look at all the pieces working together. By applying all of our major buffs, we can create these massive burst windows with high chances for crit by using our hyper stacks on our gore and our vicious throw, and then using our free auto crits on devastating blasts on top of our massive ferocity, 50% extra damage boost into all of our big damage, and then just creating the opportunity for our next major burst window by using massacre five times in a row. If you can nail that rotation, you can play Carnage Marauder, I promise. If you do not have Fang God form yet, I do apologize. You probably should pick it up as soon as possible. But if you're leveling, there are a couple of other abilities that you should know. The first is that your dual saber throw is a very basic AOE. It'll throw your two sabers in front of you. It'll also generate two rage or two fury. So if you're looking for ways to do more damage and consume less rage, or well, consume less fury, I can talk, I swear. Dual Saber Throw is a good way to do that. Additionally, your Ravage will actually not consume any Rage. So if you're looking for abilities to use that you're kind of struggling, you feel like you're gasping for Fury every time you go into the target, those are two abilities that you should be spamming a lot more. However, once you get Thane Gone Form down, that is your primary rotation. Let's talk about some of our other buffs here. The first of which is going to be our gap closers. So it's going to be our force charge. Force charge just gives you 30 meters of range and you can jump to the target at any time. Additionally, we're going to be taking predation. Predation is a group live movement buff that you can have on cooldown every 30 seconds that lets you fly around the map at an extra 100% uh, movement speed. Uh, very nice. Additionally, we have our force camouflage. Force camouflage increases your damage or increases your movement speed by I think 20% uh, and makes you invisible to the naked eye. So very handy little movement abilities to help you get around the map, especially as a melee player, you need to be closing the distance as fast as possible. Let's talk about Furious Power real quick. Furious Power works with our, our gear, Descent of the Fearless. Let's talk about Furious Power first and then we'll talk about Descent of the Fearless. Furious Power, every time you click uh, Furious Power, is going to increase the uh, next damage of, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. it's going to increase the damage of your next single target melee attack uh, by 25%. So what we want to be doing is we want to be spending our Furious Power with our burst windows. So let me, uh, let me show off real quick. So that means that when we come into our burst window, say our gore window, we're going to be using Furious Power, Ferocity, uh, let me attack the target, please. Doesn't want to. Gore, Devastating Blast, and then go back into our rotation. Now, there are ways to optimize your Furious Power, but if you're just getting started, 
I would just spend Furious Power every time you enter a Ferocity window and then just not worry about, you know, really min-maxing the ability of your Furious Power to do damage for you. It's more important to be just spamming Furious Power all the time because of our set bonus. Our set bonus is the Descent of the Fearless, and every time you gain or use a Furious Power stack, you're going to be doing increased, or you're going to be doing 10% increased damage um, for 10 seconds. Additionally, every time you attack a target or you do damage to a target, you have a 10% chance to build a stack of Furious Power. So we want to be keeping up that 10% Descent of the Fearless bonus pretty much all the time, and the best way to maintain that or to guarantee you, or to guarantee you maintain that bonus is just be spamming your furious power alongside your ferocity it's going to be doing a lot of damage very quickly with your high damaging abilities which is what we want to see that's the very basics of your furious power let's now talk about some of our defensives abilities here the first to go alongside our movement ability is going to be our Mad Dash. Mad Dash gives you a 100% defense chance for the duration of the uh, cast. There's only one global cooldown long, but it's going to send you flying forward at about 20 meters. That's going to do a moderate amount of damage and then give you that one second of uh, invincibility, essentially, while you're Mad Dashing. But it's not our primary defensive cooldowns. Our primary defensive cooldowns are going to be our Saber Ward, which has a massive, massive three-minute cooldown, which is just ridiculous. Ridiculous. So you want to be spending your Saber Ward essentially when you're getting tunneled, and that's about it. It gives you 12 seconds of increased damage reduction. It's all right. Not great. Not spectacular. What's really spectacular is your Undying Rage. Now, Undying Rage, again, has a three-minute cooldown. It's a very, very beefy boy. However, uh, it's going to reduce the damage you take by 99%. So for you PvEers, it's a great way to cheese a lot of damage that's not god damage uh, by reducing it by 99%. Or right, for your PvPers, it is a great way to obviously survive massive burst windows. However, those are massively long cooldowns. The one that's really your bread and butter is your Cloak of Pain. What happens with Cloak of Pain is that every time you take damage, you'll deal a little bit of damage back to the target, about 2k damage back to the target. And additionally, it's going to increase your flat damage reduction by 20%. For the duration of the cast additionally as it naturally lasts 10 seconds but every time you're attacked the duration of cloak of pain is refreshed and it can last up to 30 seconds so it is a flat 30 seconds of extra damage reduction and it only has a minute cooldown so that is your bread and butter of anytime you hop into combat and people start attacking you you'll want to be popping that cloak of pain first to get the extra damage off and then to get the extra 20 percent damage reduction on the target now if you're going to be playing in like a solo ranked arena, you need to know, you need to get out of combat and heal up. Your defensive cooldowns will not allow you to survive very long as a Carnage Marauder. You need to be going in doing a boatload of burst damage and then popping away. The best way to do that is by actually abandoning your feigned god form and popping on to fell splice genes. What the fell splice genes does is that it, every time you use your predation, your forced camouflage cooldown will be reset. So the best defensive cooldown you can use as a Carnage Marauder is popping a Force Camouflage, predating away, running away, and finding a corner to hide in, and then healing up to full. That way you're going to have a lot of extra cloaks running around. You're going to be running around, healing up to full, doing a lot more damage that way because you're going to be alive longer. Your team's not going to flame you for throwing on them. All right, now let's talk about our utilities. Our utilities are actually going to change based on if we're doing PvE or PvP content. This is not the gospel. If you think my utilities are trash, play whatever you want. They're not the utility police. You can do whatever you want. It's free country. So for PVE, the utilities I take are the Cloak of Carnage, which is going to increase the damage of Cloak of Pain by 15% by and extend its duration. Now, you're going to use this in PVE because you're going to stand in stupid and fluff using Cloak of Pain. Now, your healer is going to yell at you for this, but that sounds like a them problem. You are a very, very, very important DPS, and not having Cloak of Carnage up affects your uptime. So just heal more forehead. The next utility you're gonna take is gonna be our Brazen, which is gonna increase our damage reduction by 2% and then build two fury every time you're attacked. This is more I'm taking this because a lot of the other two utilities just aren't that useful in PVE. So we will take the 2% extra DR. Speaking of damage reduction, we're gonna take defensive roll here. It's going to increase our damage reduction from area attacks by 30% and increases our internal and elemental damage reduction by 3%, especially as a DPS in, PV, in PVE a lot of the damage you're going to be taking is actually area of effect based. So having 30% extra DR on all those abilities is very nice. 
We're also going to be taking Relentless, which is going to turn our Predation into a 30 second cooldown instead of consuming our stacks of Berserk, which is obviously what we're looking for. Additionally, we're going to be taking Phantom here because it is going to increase our movement speed by 15%. So that way, when you're trying to dodge mechanics, you have that little bit extra speed boost to help get you to where you need to be. Additionally, it's going to increase the duration of Force Camouflage and the movement speed of Force Camouflage. So if you're really in a pinch, you can use Force Camouflage to get out just a little bit quicker out of those mechanics. We're also going to take Expunging Camouflage here because it's going to cleanse all of negative debuffs on us whenever you use our Force Camouflage. It's a great way to help out your healers not have to cleanse you. Instead, you can kind of cleanse yourself, which is very nice. We're also going to be taking Brooding here. What Brooding here is, uh, is doing for us is that every time you use your passive regen, for example, our Channel Hatred, it's actually going to build 30 stacks of Fury for us. So we are not going to be sitting around and trying to generate our 30 stacks right away. We can actually pop right in with 30 stacks of Fury right when we open up the fight. It's very handy easy way to get rolling in the fight. Additionally, we'll be taking our Unbound. Anytime you use Predation, it's going to cleanse the roots and it's going to give you an extra 30% movement speed on Predation. It's a great way to help out your team, especially when your team gets slowed or rooted, etc. You can just pop Predation and then save them. Finally, we're going to look at our Thirst for Rage, which is going to mean our Bloodthirst generates 12 Rage whenever you activate it. Bloodthirst is our raid buff. Um, and it's also going to heal you for 1% of your maximum health every time you use an ability that consumes rage. So that way, when you're in your rotation, you're passively healing yourself for just a little bit. It's going to help out your healers just that much to help them uh, not let the team die. So those were our PvE utilities. Let's talk about our PvP utilities. A lot of these are going to be very similar. We're going to take Brazen again for the extra 2% damage reduction. We're going to take an inexorable here, uh, so that way we generate 4 rage every time we're essentially CC'd. And then we also get 30% extra uh, cooldown reduction on our unleash, which is our CC breaker, which is obviously very important in PvP. I also like to take Overwhelm here. It's a, it turns our Ravage into an Immobilize, so that way it, it's an easy way to root up a target and stop them from getting away from us. In Mass Flow, we're going to take Subjugation, which is going to uh, lower the cooldown of our Obfuscate by 15 seconds. Um, it's also going to give us uh, more Cloak of Pain, so that way anytime you're stunned, you can actually use Cloak of Pain and not have to worry about getting unstunned. So if you get in the CC chain, you can pop that Cloak of Pain, get that extra 20% DR rolling right away. Additionally, uh, Obfuscate is, so let me talk about Obfuscate real quick. Obfuscate is really a PvP ability. Obfuscate reduces the target's accuracy by 90% for six seconds. It is a great way to stop the target from doing a lot of damage for the next six seconds. Uh, so that's why we take Subjugation here in PvP. We still take Phantom here for the extra movement speed and the extra uh, cloak movement speed and Relentless for the more predations. We're also gonna take Unbound as well for the extra predation movement speed, but we're also gonna take Ruthless Aggressor with this aggressor against us, so, so the vicious throw, refunding to rage, isn't that important to us in Carnage, but what it does give you is an additional 75% damage reduction from force and tech attacks for six seconds. It's essentially an extra DCD for us to use in PVP to help you stay alive just a little bit longer. We're also gonna take Blood Warrant here. Whenever you use Saber Ward, it's going to grant you immunity to sleep, stun, or CC effects. It's essentially stopping you from getting CC'd for six seconds, which is very nice. And anytime you are attacked with Saber Ward up, you're gonna heal for 3% of your maximum health. We really care more about the CC immunity than the healing here, but the healing doesn't hurt either. All right, now that we've gone over all that, let's talk about the very basics of an opener. The opener is gonna be pretty straightforward. The only thing that's going to change is that before we go into our opening berserk window, we're going to leap to the target, battering assault it to gain the extra for or extra fury that we need to do big damage. And then we're going to use massacre. Once you do that, you can just basically go right into your opening big burst damage berserk rotation. So. To generate our 30 stacks, we're going to channel our hatred because we're in our PvE utilities. Then once the tank pulls, we're going to charge, battering assault, massacre, and then move into our berserk uh, opening fury, ferocity window. Oh, I can't talk to that. So I'm just demonstrating that. Charge, battering assault, massacre, furious strike window. One, two, three, four, Five. Now we have our ferocity window. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three, four, five. 
Now, as we discussed before, we're going to be using our Furious Power with our Ferocity stacks here. So Furious Power, Berserk, Ferocity, Massacre, Vicious Throw, Devastating Blast. One, two, three, four, five. Window two, Gore, DB, Battering Assault. One, two, three, four, five. Berserk, Opening damage window two three four five four db battery assault one two three four five repeat ad nauseum if you can nail that rotation you'll do just fine damage as a carnage marauder let's hop to a game and see how it actually plays in a pvp setup so two seconds all right, after my computer decided to destroy itself, we finally got the recording to get up and running. You're gonna see a couple of frames here are dropping a, a hot second for the opening of this game, but don't worry, I promise it gets better. Just stick with it. Uh, I had to play through it, so if you have to watch it, I had to play through it. So I guess that means we are even. Jumping in here, our team decided to hop down to the right-hand side of the pylon and try to deny their pylon instead of doing a standard mid vest. So that means that we get to just hold W into their entire enemy team and uh, go to town, which is a exciting opportunity because not a lot of uh, uh, hyper gates have to go in this way. However, uh, it also creates a couple problems in that you are really uh, you're playing a gambler's game right here and not playing the mid. You're betting that you can delay their pylon more than they can cap it up, uh, and really betting on yourself that you can make it happen. So. This Mepsi guy here is their healer. He's going to be the primary target throughout this match. You can see we're spending our ferocity windows and bursting right into this man, doing as much as we can to try to slow down his healing to the best of our ability. Even though that he has a guard on them, it's probably for the best to stick through him right now and just try to burst him through when he gets that low. Um, the nice thing about playing a Carnage Marauder is that your arm penetration, 100% arm penetration, can kind of negate the tankiness of a tank. So if you need to swap to a tank, you can relatively easily. You're gonna see uh, this man knocked me away. I can't get to him real slow right now, but once we finally do get to him, you can lay down some serious hurt uh, with your ferocity procs. Just quick little murder session on him. Adios, me, me. Go back on to the healer for a second, but we're not gonna get through. Hit, hit, blah, blah, not gonna get him through his guard. So instead, we're gonna try to find a DPS to slow them down to make sure that they're not able to cap their pylon. Even if we don't get their healer, being able to stop them from getting their pylon, uh, even if we don't get their pylon, I should say, not just their healer, is way more valuable to us than uh, trying to, to go for the win here. So instead, we're gonna slow down the sniper. Uh, stop him from free casting into all of our boys and just try to lay some massive hurt into him when our ferocity window comes back. Instead, we're going to get knocked 17 years away. Uh, most unfortunate. So slowly waddling back over to him. We're going to try to get our, the, the tank real quick with our ferocity window, but he has all of his tents and cooldowns up and a healer with him. So we're going to get back on the healer, just slow him down, and we get the tank because of guard, and then we'll get the healer because he obviously has no guard anymore. He stealthed out just in time, but then you can see there he died to dots. Again, we're not that afraid of the uh, of the tank in this situation because we have, uh, we have carnage, which means that we can do massive armor penetration and really chunk through some tanks here with... Absolutely no fear of any repercussions. And that, I'm sorry, I keep saying tanks. Uh, any class that has heavy armor, you can kind of ignore. Like the passive damage reduction of power techs and juggernauts, you can really get around uh, just because you have that massive armor penetration. Uh, I kind of hold W here for no good reason. Uh, and I'm now 1v3 versus the guys. But we pop some defensive cooldowns. We pop Undying. We're just going to come in here and do some big boy damage. Try to buy our guy some time to cap up the pylon. So instead, we're going to stealth out here, and it looks like this man is going to be able to stealth cat the pylon. Uh, so we get the pylon just in time, and now we're just going to go back to work dealing with this shadow and healer combo. The shadow, unfortunately, is a tank, so he's going to be very obnoxious to deal with. But fortunately, again, we're carnage. We can kind of get away from it. Now you're gonna see here that our Fury stacks are building very quickly. This is because of the utilities that we're taking. Every time we're taking damage, we're actually building stacks of Fury. So you don't have to have those long prolonged windows of building five massacres over and over and over again. 
you have the opportunity to come in and, and build fury and, and build rage just by getting attacked, which is going to really help with your rage generation, uh, help you get those more meaty uh, critical windows of burst damage with your ferocity procs by combining that berserk and ferocity. So that is one nice thing about uh, doing PVP is that you do not have to spend so much time spamming Massacre, at least not compared to when you're doing the usual PVE rotation. You can see here we have now captured both pylons, so we can kind of just hold down the fort here. We don't have to be super aggressive anymore. Uh, and if we can cap this pylon, we're going to win. So we're going to stealth out here and grab the health patches because we're, we're not seeing those in the massive heals to help us survive there. So using the stealth out to find ways to regen health is very important. I know we discussed that previously with, with stealthing out and regening. But even in regs, if you can use your stealth outs to go out and find those health packs, uh, it's a great way to stay in the fight for much longer. So instead of dying and running back all the way, you can just hop right back in and do a catastrophic amount of damage here. So again, our ferocity window just chunking away the sniper, putting massive work into him. He did get away here for a hot second, but uh, not for long. It is the power of the Marauder's closing abilities, especially in PvP. You're going to find a lot of situations where you're not going to be on top of the target that you want to be tunneling into. But the fact that Marauder has so many opportunities to get the extra speed boost to catch them is very important. Especially like a sniper can't always jump to them, so you have your predation to try to uh, run him down. You have your mad dash to run him down, etc. You can even use your camouflage aggressively if you want to. If you're really desperate to chase someone down. So you do have other options to get in there and do a, a little bit more damage by, by reaching your targets much quicker, uh, which I know is a problem that a lot of melee specs have, especially is just trying to run down those obnoxious range players that don't want you to channel into them because they are bad people and they do not enjoy your damage, which is just a darn shame. Our team is kind of bullying them right now, so what we're going to do is going to try to hold them up in their spawn for as long as possible. You can see here some of our friends are coming along with us, so pop that... Uh, cloak of pain to get that 20% DR and then just holding W into this healer popping our massive ferocity windows and then just laying down the hurt locker is uh, kind of ridiculous right now unfortunately cars is very fast it's, it's hard to commentate the uh, exactly what you're doing every single time but the fact that now you know what each burst window is can kind of lend you to understand what's going on every time we, we reach target, right? So we're going to pop Ferocity, Gore, Devastating Blast, which we're out of this. Uh, and that's like our massive burst window. Now we have our 30 stacks of Berserk. So what can we do? Well, we can pop our Berserk and then we can pop Ferocity and get in there and do a massive catastrophic burst window. Unfortunately, this man has a guard, so it's not as catastrophic as it possibly could be. But even through guard, you can tell we're absolutely pumping out damage right now which is just uh, exactly what you like to see. Now, Carnage has an issue in that the AoE is not fantastic on Carnage. You have the option of either using your Sweeping Slash, which will trigger an Ataru Form Strike on every single target, but it's only, uh, it's only directed in 180 degrees in front of you. You can also use Smash, which is a full 360 degree uh, smash around you, but it's not really a spec designed to do AoE damage. So even though... Uh, a different spec might be more suited for AoE farming. Carnage is very much the single target burst damage, not the sorry, not the AoE damage farming machine that a lot of the other specs are. However, it does single target burst damage very well, uh, and, and you're gonna see here just chunking through this tank because of armor penetration and just oh, and bonk, bonk, bonk. Adios, say goodbye to your tank. Now this healer has no tank, etc. This uh, sniper is on very low health. We're in a little bit of danger here, so I'm going to try to throw them off by popping our Force Cloak and then uh, running away for a hot second. A lot of times what players will do is as soon as you cloak out, they're going to stop looking for you. You're going to find another target and pop in. So even if you cloak out for even like two seconds in a regs match, you can find a lot of survivability out of that just by you know taking the target away for three seconds. Uh, a lot of players are... I. Brain dead monkeys is a very uh, crass way to put it, but a lot of players are brain dead monkeys, especially in, including me, uh, because we, as soon as our target disappears, we're on to the next thing. We're on to the next thing. We're on to the next thing. We're very much focused on the here and now, uh, and we can very easily forget about stealth targets. Unfortunately, here I forget about uh, the pylon exploding behind me. I had no tools to get out of this. I tried to mad dash out. It just didn't work out. Unfortunate. 
Now our perfect game has ended, which is real unfortunate, so we can be a little more aggressive without having to worry about, oh man, the no death game, how are we gonna live this? Uh, so instead of, you know, being smart here, we can kind of just hold W into these boys. I'm gonna wait and make sure all my guys are behind me. All right, now we can just go in. Um, rip, the, rip the perfect game, that's all right. Once again, we have the healer. Big opening, ferocity burst window. Yep, all the damage in the world. Feels good, feels good, feels good. And then just spamming that massacre, getting those three stacks in there. Gore into devastating blast once that uh, uh, evasion wears off. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Stay on target. Stay on target. Um, now, unfortunately, we kind of, we kind of, uh, I, I see the guy is capping, and I realize it's not my PT capping, it's the other guy capping. Uh, so we probably should have stopped that cap, but, you know, that's okay. We're still winning 575 to 200, and that's it without even capping our own side yet. So we're just going to hold these guys down on their side for as long as possible before we hop into the, uh, the panic mode. And we ended up capping our side. So this map is going to be over in less than a minute 30 here. Unfortunately, here, we uh, I, I really messed this up. I don't have a CC breaker. I got a little too aggressive. So I went in. I thought I had a little more time than I did, and then I got the CC, and now there's just nothing I can do to get out of this situation. If I had one more second, I could potentially get out of here and, and, and kill this guy and, and mad dash away, but the CC completely boned me over. So most unfortunate, but at the same time, the match is kind of over at this point. So it is what it is. Carnage Marauder, in recap, is a very interesting, kind of janky, uh, single-target burst spec. It gets overshadowed by its peers because it doesn't do Annihilation-style damage, and it doesn't have the, the same burstiness of Carnage Marauder, or I'm sorry, of Fury Marauder. However, it can be a very fun spec, and it can be often overshadowed because people will think, oh, Carnage Marauder is a meme right now. Uh, it is kind of a meme, but at the same time, it can be a very fun meme. And in my opinion, fun is S tier over bigger damage every single day of the week. So if you like playing the Carnage Marauder, I would definitely recommend checking it out. It's a very fast paced style game. Uh, definitely not your uh, not your grandma's game. Another thing to, to mention is that if you have high ping, Carnage Marauder might not be for you. It does rely on those very, very quick movements and those very rapid responses of having you know, 1.3 second cooldown or 1.1 second cooldown during Berserk. So if you have a high ping, you might want to stay clear of Carnage Marauder just because you're not going to get the same performance out of it as someone with a, a more stable connection will. So something to keep in mind for those of you looking to play the Carnage. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I hope this guide was helpful for you guys that are just learning Carnage Marauder. Uh, and until next time, that's, uh, that's all I got for now. So you can see here we took a, a fair bit of damage and did a fair bit in return for a single target spec. So... Good game. Hope you guys take care. If you have any questions, again, leave them down in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, that's all I got. You guys take care now. Thanks for all the support. I appreciate it. So, peace.